Welcome, one and all, my appreciation for showing up. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is August 3rd. It is Wednesday. Now, if you haven't been here before, what we do is look at OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have something special going on. They may have already run and have some more run to give, or they've just got great technicals on the charts and look like they're going to explode, or they've got some great headlines. Now, this is news I personally looked at over the last five days. The oldest is at the top. The newest is at the bottom. Now, this is only OTC market news, not penny stock news, though those are penny stocks. But a penny stock can be any stock under $5, and it doesn't matter what market it's sold on. OTC, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, as long as it's under 5 bucks, it qualifies. Now, the great thing about finding penny stocks on the major exchanges, they're free to trade. Most brokers are still charging for OTC trades. So when you get a chance to trade a penny stock on the major exchange, it won't cost you anything to get in or anything to get out. You get more profit. Now we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I always start my initial research on an OTC stock. Now I will use other sites, but this is where I come first because every single day, Fenor and the SEC update this site for every single OTC stock. You know how much time that saves me searching and searching for every stock I'm interested in? So start here. If you can't find what you want, then go out into the big world looking for information. All right. How did our OTC market fare today? Not good, folks. It's worse than it was yesterday. The only thing that improved is our dollar volume went up. Or did it? Gee whiz. You know, I think we were actually at 2.1 billion the other day, so that too has dropped 1.9. Our share volume, I think we were at 7.8 billion, we're down to 7.5. And our trades was just almost at 250. We are hoping to break that, and now we're down to 229. So it looks like it's even a slower day. Things are getting slower and slower. And what I find unique about that is the market still has stocks moving, but they're not big moves. They're not running on big catalysts. They're running on very small catalysts that most of us would overlook. And we're going to see a lot of those today. Come on, I got a bunch to show you. We're going to be looking at an array of stocks here. Now, of course, we're going to focus in on three. The three we're going to look at have what I would consider a strong catalyst and the activity on the chart show that it was pretty impressive. Then we're going to look at a bunch of other stocks that had small catalysts, but I think could be popping like popcorn over the next seven days. Now, the first stock we're going to take a look at is on the New York Stock Exchange. It is a penny stock. It's under $5. This is QNGY, Quantergy Systems. Now, Quantergy Systems had some good news yesterday, but they even had better news today. And they did run, but then they dipped. She finished the day at about 43 cents with only 23% gains. Now, what does Quantergy do? Quantergy develops and manufactures LiDAR. LiDAR is the little computer chip that makes driverless cars able to see so that they can drive. Well, this company makes that, but they make them for a lot of different purposes, not just driving cars. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she normally does 2.2 million shares. Today, she did 19.4 million shares. So you're looking at about eight times her normal volume. And I think this is just the start, folks. And what is the share structure here? Well, now keep in mind, we are looking at a major exchange stock, and this is an OTC market site. So we're going to have gaps in information. We're lucky we get any information over here at all. So we got an outstanding share count of 92 million. They don't list the float, but even if they did, I don't use it. I always use the unrestricted shares. I count on that to be more accurate. And if it's not listed here as it's not here, then I'll go use Google as my backup. That's right. It's a backup, not my first go-to. They show me that this is about 39, 40 million shares in the float, which isn't bad at all. Financials, what do we have going on over here? Well, now that's surprising. They have no revenues last year at all. No revenues the year before. This is surprising. I thought that they were in business. Okay. Well, they were, at the beginning of this year, making money. They did $1.3 million. We've got three zeros up there you got to throw behind there. Makes more sense. But it cost them $1.8 million to make $1.3. So they lost a half a million dollars. 
And I really do find this surprising, if not confusing. LiDAR is a big necessity for the new technology we have. So I just thought they'd have been making more money. Now, maybe the competition's bigger than I think. Maybe the semiconductor chip problem is still bigger than I think. So there is room for improvement here by all means. Disclosures. What did they give us over here? They don't show us any financial filings, but they do show us the SEC filings. The most current one here is a Form 4. This is when an insider wants to buy or sell shares. And it looks like DeSanto Jim, who is a director here, he discarded a bunch of shares and then he bought some shares. But I really don't think this has a whole lot to do with why this stock was moving today. I think it's all about the news. So this is the news I was talking about. They did get a non-compliance notice regarding their market cap. They have been under $50 million for the last 45 days. Now, I'm really not too familiar with that one. I am familiar with the minimum price. If you're under a dollar for too long, they give you like six months to get it up over a dollar, and it has to stay over a dollar, close over a dollar for 20 days in a row. But this one is about the market cap. They got to get the market cap over $50 million. And just out of curiosity, what was that market cap? $32.4 million. So they got to get that price up probably to a dollar, right? If there's 40 million shares, that would only be four. So they got to get it up to like a dollar 25, actually, if they want to get back into compliance. So that actually is a motivating factor. I don't know how you do it. Maybe tweets, maybe deals, whatever. They've got to get that price up to about a buck and a quarter. Ready for a ride? <laughs> well, the news today may be what we need to get it moving. Yesterday's news. Quantergy M-Series LiDAR sensors help busy Chinese ports reduce accidents and false alarms. Now, we're not going to jump into that, but it is good news. We are doing business with China. They're buying our chips. Then we had news come out today. Quantergy announces world's first 2D, 360-degree pole LiDAR sensor. Now, they've got a lot of information here, and I'm not going to go through it all, but... What I've got here is going to be enlightening. Quantergy Systems, a leading provider of LiDAR sensors and smart 3D solutions, today announced the M1 Edge Pole LiDAR sensor. This new Internet of Things sensor expands Quantergy's presence in the security parameter intrusion detection market by providing higher detection accuracy at a lower price than competing LiDAR solutions. In addition, this sensor increases the number of industrial use cases that LiDAR can address. Quantergy's M1 Edge LiDAR sensors enable smart awareness for applications that require simple object detection and alerting capabilities. The M1 Edge pole is ideal for any environment where threats can come from small objects or in hard to reach places, such as monitoring rooftops and indoor spaces for potential intruders, creating a virtual fence around perimeter lines for commercial security applications to detect anomalous behavior and potentially dangerous objects being thrown over the fence. Protection of critical infrastructure such as data centers, transportation hubs, oil and gas facilities, transformer substations, and telecommunication facilities. The M1 Edge Pole's industry-leading angular resolution allows it to detect objects as small as a ball or even a pen with a high degree of accuracy up to tens of meters away from the sensor. So you can see how this can definitely be a big money maker. Security is an issue. Bombs are an issue. Guns are an issue. There's all sorts of safety factors. And if you can get a computer that can see a heck of a lot better than people and can detect this stuff instantaneously, well, that's going to be worth a ton of money. Let's go take a look at that chart. This thing was ripping earlier today and then took a hard fall. But the market was all over the place today. Things that were running did fall. Things that were falling started running. Let's go see. We're taking a look at QNGY over here at Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got just for signing up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. You can too. And then just keep your account open. That's all you got to do. And you can use this anytime you like. So this is QNGY's six-month, four-hour chart. And it's not very impressive. Not at all. It's been quite docile. We've got two exciting things here, maybe three. You got to run right there. A run right there with huge spike of volume and then our run today 
that one right down there. Yeah, we're excited about that. This one back here went from $3 to $8. Huge run. I have no clue why. I looked over at the OTC markets, but they only had news back to May on this major exchange stock. And I'll be honest, I did not go Google it. But it wasn't up there very long, folks. It came tumbling down like Humpty Dumpty and then fell and rolled down this hill like Jack and Jill till it hit this low bubble of 31 cents. And right now we're not far above that. We're at 43 cents. Now it is right in this area that our volume is starting to come into play. We had hardly anything at all behind there. We had a big shoot right there and a big shoot here. Now today, was grand. It was the first time we actually got over the 200 in the last six months. She was on top of the 50. A lot of our stocks are underneath every single thing when they shoot up. This was already sitting on top of the 50. And now she's sitting on top of the 200 day SMA on the four hour chart. And technicals are outstanding, folks. Our PPO, which is our percentage price oscillator, is like the MACD. You want to see that blue line on top pointing up. That is a guarantee your price is moving up. This is the ADX shows trend direction. If it changes direction, then the trend has changed direction. It shows it's still moving up. MACD, it's a tsunami. And we are just virtually in the overbought on the RSI. Four hour looks very good. 20 day, one hour view. She was above the 200 20 days ago, rolled down that hill to that low bubble of 31 cents, worked her way back up to the 200, and then shot up today very, very quickly and pulled back just as quick. However, our technicals are still real strong. PPO is pushing up. Uh, trend hasn't changed. MACD is a tsunami, and we have pulled back a wee bit on the RSI. We're now in the low 60s. I don't want to see it get below 60. Five day, five minute. Now that's kind of interesting. I'm looking at yesterday. Yesterday we had good news. We had China buying the LiDAR and they've been having success using it. But it doesn't look like the investors were too impressed with the news at all. We had a jump and bump first thing in the morning. Then it fell right down to the 200 day SMA and it used it like a bed. It just laid there all day long. We had a bump pre-market this morning, got up on top of the 50 day and then it was at uh, quarter to one is when that news came out, quarter to one, you can tell, right? She took off. She blasted off here from 35 cents up to 55 cents, and then she had a very quick fall. And I gotta be honest, folks, I didn't see that fall. I'm monitoring the news all through the day, and I did see the news come out. And as soon as I see news that looks good, I go check out the charts, see what the heck's going on. And I saw this bad boy running, and that's when I put it on the list of stocks we may look at today. But I had other things I was taking care of, and I didn't come back, and I didn't realize that she had this huge fall afterwards. Now, I'm going to zoom in just on today, and I'm going to put my attitude lines here. This is a lot like the Fibonacci. The Fibonacci works on this basis. I'm taking a line at the top and the bottom of this surge, and then I'm going to find the middle of it. I'm just eyeballing it, not trying to line up to anything, just finding the middle. So... I put this here as an attitude line. I want to see a surge keep at least 50%. I want 50 or 51% at least of those gains. That makes me feel confident. If it sits above this line, it'll normally stay up there and not come back down. I'm not saying it's a guarantee. It's just more likely. But when she comes under it, there's a good chance she can fall and fall deep. She'll normally go down to one of her SMAs and either hang around there, bounce, or dribble. I mean, it can do anything. This one's working its way back up. This one has been coming back up to that 50% mark between the two, hitting its head on it over and over, even after market hours. She is pushing up. All of our SMAs are climbing hill right now, including the 200. Our PPO is still over the pink. Our MACD is still over the top. RSI is getting light, and we you can see the trend change. We got a lot of trend changing in here, and that's what will happen. If this just starts going up and down, up and down, up and down, this will become a straight line virtually because there's no trend. It will just balance off in the middle. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to take off right now. The technicals don't show it, but folks, the news does, the technology does, the first mover advantage does. This is the world's first. 2D, 360 degree LIDAR that they're using in security. How many people need security? Well, everybody can use it. How many companies? All of them probably. My point, this can be big. This can be real big. And this is the first day the news came out. 
come on folks put QNGY on your watch list keep an eye on this if it doesn't do anything tomorrow it will in the future I promise this next stock we're taking a look at it's no stranger to on top and hot we've talked about it a few times we even did an interview with the management and it went really really well now today the company had a news press come out and it was good news it was timely news and I think it's going to do a lot to stimulate the price of this company this is TOMDF Todos Medical. She finished a day at 0 0.019 cents with 61% gains. They're on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. You've got to audit your financials to exist here. That makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. I tell you to look for these all the time because that's more verified information. So this looks really good. Now the company's description. Totos Medical is an in vitro diagnostic company focused on the distribution of comprehensive suite of solutions for the screening and diagnosis of COVID-19 and the development of blood tests for early detection of cancer and Alzheimer's disease. Now the company's got the testing kits for COVID. They've also got two products, Tolavid and Tolavar. One is a supplement and one is a medication. One is getting approval and the supplement really is the medication. It's just highly diluted. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Huge. We got about 35 times her normal volume. She went from 1.7 to 72 million. Lots of attention. Speaking of lots, we got lots of shares in the float. Holy cow. Just under a billion. 983 million shares in the float. They are making money. They did about $12 million at the end of last year and got to keep a little over $4 million. And on the quarterly basis, yep, last quarter they did $2.1 million and got to keep almost a million. So they are generating revenues on a regular basis. Obviously, their financials are all current and SEC filings. We got an S1 here that came out a few days ago. I did glance in on this. It is a, it's kind of like a public offering, but they're selling units. A unit is a package deal. You get a share and a warrant in this deal. So you buy one, you get both. But that really probably hasn't got, well, I'm not going to say it hasn't got anything to do with this. It could be helping the price go along, but I think it's more about the news. When we jump over here to the news, you'll see COVID all the way down. Tolavid, Toliver, that has been their focus, COVID. But now, since we have had monkeypox come on the scene, they are pivoting to put some attention over here too. This is the news that came out today. Todos Medical initiates validation plan for PCR-based monkeypox test at CLIACAP, the clinical testing laboratory Provista Diagnostics. Now they tell us here they have the lesion swabs and saliva-based sample collection planned. Peer-reviewed publication demonstrating saliva testing sensitivity opens doors for asystematic testing. The company today announced that it has initiated a validation plan for PCR-based monkeypox testing. The significant investment we made to automate PCR testing at ProVista to maximize the COVID testing capacity can now be partially redeployed towards monkeypox as we prepare to help the nation scale up monkeypox testing capacity to meet the emerging public health crisis. Now folks, I think this is great because the problem with the COVID test is it came way too late. We had to devise it first. We were behind the game. This time we're ahead of the game. We see the monkeypox coming. It is happening right now. There's more breakouts in more states. Scary, scary, I know. And that's why this is going to be a big deal. People are going to want to test themselves for monkeypox. And I see two companies now. We talked about one yesterday, which ran. And then you've got this one. I'm sure they're going to start popping up all over the place. But the first one that can get this test kit to the market is probably going to do really well. Won't be the only company, but they'll be doing really well. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Oh, another very dismal chart. This is TOMDF six month, four hour chart. Obviously this stands out huge. You had a jump here on January 13th from a nickel to 65 cents. You're talking 1,300% gains in one day. It went up and went down. 
all in that same day. And she didn't just land where she started, she fell even further down. And we got a low bubble here, just a smidge over a penny. And right now we're just a smidge under two cents. There was lots of volume. Back here, when we were going through the COVID, they were coming out with their tests, coming out with their supplements, their medications, and it's gotten real thin here since the COVID has gotten a little quieter. But now here comes monkeypox, and look at that volume shoot, folks, and look at the technicals. Wow, look at that RSI. RSI is at 87. It is blazing. 70 is where it starts to turn red, and everything else is pointing up, too. Everything looks like it's going to the moon on this. 20-day, one hour absolutely nothing to talk about all this time until today she had a serious rip right at the bell took a serious drop and is now climbing again it looks like she's still climbing after market hours and even look at the volume at the end of the day a lot of interest in this and the technicals are all pushing up looking excellent folks five day five minute yep right from the bell she took off strong volume at the beginning of the day weak in the middle very strong at the end of the day. We like to see that. So she hit this high here from, is that about a penny? Just a little over a penny to almost two cents. So you were close to about 90% gains right there. And that hit at, uh, oh, 10 to 10. 10 to 10, before even 10 o'clock, she had hit her high for the day and then fell all the way back to the 50. You can see she hit it right there and bounced. Tried to stay on it cut through it looks like she's right in the 20 yeah it looks like she is hanging right on that 20 right now and right about at the last 30 minutes of the day she started to take off including after market hours she is pushing up again all of the technicals still on the five minute are pushing up folks this looks like a momo play for tomorrow i'm going to come in on that one minute what i mean by momo play this still has momentum that's locked up inside of it you have all this volume at the end of the day. You have this rise in price, and right up to the end of the day, it is still riding up. Now, this is an OTC stock. It can be traded after market, but it's going to have to be traded by marketers and brokers, not us investors. So there could be a lot of orders sitting in the queue waiting to be bought tomorrow morning. And they are going to be on this up rise. People were bidding higher to get into this. So we might see a run just like this tomorrow morning. And I would be out before 10, 10.05. Now, it may run further than that. You know, I'm going to let you be the judge of watching your technicals. But I normally expect a fall at 10, 10.05. It may come back, but that's a long ride through the day for it to come back. So I like to get out before 10, 10.05 take my gains and if there's another play in that stock I'll get back in later so I like the way this stock looks for a morning run tomorrow I like this stock for setting up for being in the monkeypox testing business it's gonna be big folks you know it's gonna be big so another one you need to put on your list is TOMDF watch it tomorrow watch it next week watch it for a month and this last stock we're taking a look at is another penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker OTIC, Autonomy Inc. Now, Autonomy Inc. had news come out today. Actually, it was a filing. And when I first started reading it, it was bad news. I mean, really bad. And I'm looking at that gain going, what the heck is going on? Well, I kept reading, and then they had something better to say. So I guess we can say they had good news follow bad news. And it looks like the investors prefer the good over the bad. It finished today at $0.37 cents with 48% gains. Now, they tell us over here that Autonomy is a biopharmaceutical company that is dedicated to the development of innovative therapeutics for neurotology. Now, pay attention to this next sentence. This is very interesting. Never heard this before. The company pioneered the application of drug delivery technology to the ear in order to develop products that achieve sustained drug exposure from a single local administration. This approach is covered by a broad patent estate and is being utilized to develop a pipeline of products addressing important unmet medical needs in neurotology. So what was the relative volume around their filing today? Not bad at all. They jumped from 1.1 million to 26 million, 24 times their normal volume. Share structure. All right, we don't have the unrestricted shares here, but I've looked it up. It is 54 million. 
just a little less than the outstanding shares at 56. Financials, is this company making any money? They are making some, not a whole lot. Oh, not good at all. They did $125,000 at the end of last year, but we're in debt a quarter million. Looking at this year's finances, uh, there's nothing here. There's nothing going on right now at all. So hopefully this news is gonna help them. Disclosures, uh, yeah, the disclosures is where I gotta go. So just let me jump on into that right now. It is the one we were just looking at. This is an 8K that came out for the company. And they've got one line here that I was reading. On August 1st, 2022, Autonomy issued a press release announcing the results for its phase two clinical trial of Otto 313 in patients with tinnitus. And then down here, they have all the information and you didn't have to read far to get it. These bullets say most of everything we need to know. Otto 313 demonstrated no clinical meaningful improvement versus the placebo for primary and secondary endpoints across all time points. It was an utter failure. It just didn't do anything they wanted. Bad news. So the company has decided to discontinue development of Otto 313 and implement other measures to extend its cash runway. Their new clinical focus will shift to Otto 413 following positive phase 2A results in April 22. Top line results for evaluation of higher dosing still expected in the fourth quarter of this year. So there you go, folks. Bad news. The drug that they did just have phase two trial on failed miserably. So they're going to put all their attention onto another drug that is also in phase two trial, but doing much better. I don't know a whole lot more information about it, folks. You may have to do some more deep diving. Uh, biopharmaceutical companies are not my cup of tea like mine. There's a lot of technical information. I just have a hard time understanding, and I don't like to read with a dictionary next to me. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like. Well, I'm not going to call that chart unimpressive, but ooh, God. This is ticker OTIC. She has a high bubble here of $2.06 and a low bubble of $0.24. Cents. She was riding the 200 here up and over, up and over. And then here about a week ago, she had a tremendous fall. I got to tell you, folks, I was unaware of this. I just had to go do some research to get you some answers. Turns out that she had earnings right here and they were disappointing and then just a couple of days after that a price target came out now i don't much understand this because they said the price target was originally six dollars and they cut it down to three dollars well our high here is two dollars and sixty cents we're not even close to the cut of three dollars let alone the six dollars they said it was originally worth so she fell from about let's call it two dollars and twenty cents she has fallen a thousand percent virtually virtually a thousand percent she hit a bottom down here and is now starting to come up and has had volume in the last few days now what i want you to see here doesn't this look like a mirror image this blue line is kind of doing what this pink line is doing. They're coming together. You know, they're kind of doing the same thing. When they are coming together, the blue line is coming down. That means the price is falling. This one is coming up. It means the trend isn't changing. So the fall is still falling. So when they're coming closer together, you know the price is falling. This is my PPO and ADX. Put the PPO on the top, put the ADX on the bottom and look for that pattern. When the two, the red and the blue, start coming together, the price is falling. And exactly the opposite works. When you start seeing them spread apart and get further and further apart, the price is going up. Every single time, you can guarantee it. Now, there's lots of other patterns that will bring it down and make it go up. But this one's a real easy one to see. You can see that right now, it looks like a bottle and it's come together. When it starts opening up like an hourglass to the other side, this is gonna start moving up. And all you gotta do is watch that blue line. And if it changes directions and starts to turn over, that's your exit point, folks. I really love my PPO. So you can see she has been falling, following this pattern. And right now, it looks like she's just getting ready to separate. We got a crossover on our MACD. It's just going positive. It's way under the signal line, as you would expect. But it's going to be working her way back up. And look at that RSI. Right there is the basement floor. This thing broke through the floor and is digging a grave underneath the floor. It is now coming up out of the grave. Lots of room for growth here, folks. Remember, I said that is 900 to 1,000% drop. 
Let's come in on that 20 day, one hour view. All right, so she was just sitting on top of the 200 at a dip here, a dip there, and she started to lose it fast and then fell really quick and come down here and just over today, yeah, it's just pre-market, after-market, and today she's had a smidge. Now, I wouldn't expect this to start coming back up until these SMAs come to their bottom and start arching. They've got to have that bottom first. Now, you can get a cut. It can easily cut through here and start moving up forward. You see our spread here? You see how we're starting to spread out? Now, this is pretty flat. That means the price isn't going up. It's doing more sideways than anything else. We need these two to actually spread. But look at our MACD. Our MACD has been working its way up through this area here, all this nasty stuff. It's actually been improving. It is just now approaching the signal line and the blue is on top. RSI is nothing to mention. So the technical show signs of improvement, but nothing great right yet. Five day, five minute. So we were sliding down the hill and then we found a ledge. Boom! Hit our butt really hard, dragged it across the floor here. That gave the 200 time to catch up. Now it's right there. We just got back on top of it, trying to stay on top of it. And that's all we're doing right now is just settling, getting everything back in order. You know, you have a fall that big. It takes you a little while to get your senses back. <laughs> and once you do, then you can start climbing again. So she just fell. She's still shaking her head. There's a lot that can go on. I think some more DD is needed here. But again, you're talking about a biopharmaceutical company in phase two trial. Yeah, they may have had top line results. That's great. That means they're going to go into phase three. Now, maybe there is phase two B which they can get some more good news out of. But if they're going into phase three, folks, phase three can be anywhere from three, five, seven years of testing. That can be a very long wait. And between now and then, since the company has no money, I presume they have no products that they're selling, which means they won't be making any money. They're gonna have to sell more shares. That's the only way they can keep the business running. That's why I particularly don't like biopharmaceuticals because they're research and development and that takes money to keep the operation going however with the news that just came out with their change of direction and this heavy fall i'd at least be expecting some sort of recovery maybe 50 percent of this which would take it from 36 cents to wow 93 cents yeah that's what i'm thinking you know i always like to draw a line at the top and the bottom right so you find the middle, and I can see that's too high right now, so I'm going to lower that. But that's where I would expect this to go first. No, it's not going to run all the way to the top, but it will go there because that's a perfect average. Smack dab in the middle from where it fell to where it landed, that is an average that the algorithms recognize. Whether we draw it there, whether there's any supports or resistance to draw it from, doesn't matter. It is a perfect average, and that's what algorithms work on. Averages. Millions and billions of them every single day. So between here and there, that is a 90 cents. You're looking at about 55 cents. That's 150% gain just to get up to here. If she changes direction, the technicals will give us all the signs we need. So this could be a one to consider. I'm not making any promises with this one. It was just a strange one to see running on bad news when there's good news, but really it could be a long wait for that good news to make any difference in the price of the stock. So are we ready for our leftovers? I got five stocks here for you. Now these all have what I call little catalysts. They're things that haven't even actually happened yet, but the stocks were jumping today. Now two of these stocks look to be going pink current anytime. Two of them have filings right around the corner and one just hit an all time volume high. So we're gonna look at the pink currents first. This is ticker ASCC Aristocrat Group Core. Finished today at four and a half cents with 95% gains and no catalyst. She is pink limited. 
That means that they're late on filings. That's the whole point here. If you're late too long with your filings on the OTC market, they will pull you off the OTC market and put you in the expert market where you are not allowed to sell your shares. Nobody can buy them or sell them. So if you're invested, you're in limbo while they're down there and they will stay down there until they get their filings caught up. Then they'll come back on the market, but there's no guarantee that they will. So it's kind of scary. Well, this company just put out a ton of filings yesterday. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven filings catching up on all of their late filings. And they cover the last two quarters of this year and the last quarter of last year. They also have an annual report that they put in in October. Now I'm pointing that out because of this attorney letter, which just came out yesterday. Annual reports count for nothing until you put in an attorney letter. Why they waited so long, I don't know. But now that it's there, they can get approved to go back to current. Now, the attorney letter doesn't say anything about the numbers being actual or factual. He's looking at the other information, the board members, the phone numbers, address, stuff like that. And if it all looks legal, he says it looks good. Once that's in and approved, this company goes to pink current and investors love that. So we're going to be looking for more activity on this if it goes pink. The other company that is striving to go pink is WLAN, Wheelin Technologies. She's at 0051, 13% gains at the end of the day. I am sure it was higher than that. And we can see there is nothing been put over here, uh, not for a few days, but there's nothing that stands out and there's definitely no attorney letter. Now, there's a tweet over here that explains more to us. Hannah here wrote the CFO and he answered her. Thank you for your email. All that is needed to remove the yield sign, and what he's talking about is that little yield sign right there that hovers over pink limited information. Once you go pink, the yield sign disappears. Uh, all that is needed to remove the yield sign is a qualified attorney opinion letter to assure the accuracy of reportings over the past 12 months, the annual report. This is very much in hand and we expect to be able to file this by the end of the week. It then takes the OTC markets a couple more days to review the opinion. So we expect that within the next 10 to 14 days, the yield will be removed. There you go, another one on the cusp of going pink. This company here is talking about their earnings. This is on the NASDAQ, it's a penny stock. This is Ear, Ear Go. They finished today at $1.23 with 75% gains, folks. And they came out with news one of the last days of last month. This is all I could find. Ear Go to report second quarter 2022 financial results on August 8th. 2022 so you're looking five days away and today she's already putting money on the table like i said i didn't find anything else that doesn't mean there absolutely isn't anything else but you know i do look around so this one has five more days i'd keep my eye on this one another one going for earnings in about seven days is wbev oh how i love this name wink inc say that with me wink inc Kind of nice, isn't it? This is another penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange at $2.16 with 71% gains just for earnings. They had a news press come out July 29th. Wink Inc., a differentiated platform for growing alcoholic beverage brands, today announced that it will report financial results for the second quarter 2022 on Thursday, August 11th. So we got seven days before this one hits. The last one we're going to take a look at is GWHP, Global Whole Health Partners Corporation. Finished the day just over a penny, 0 0.0116, with 41% gains. And this is why she jumped. Another tweet. This comes from Bass Bunny. GWHP, great due diligence here by Nurit OTC has a tiny float. What is the float? Let's go take a look at that float. 55 million, 56 million. So they call 56 million a tiny float. New management, highest volume she has ever had was last week. Someone's collecting. I like the fact he called her a she. I call stock she all the time. Sitting really low. Chart looks amazing. Ton of potential to explode. That was on the 29th. That was on the 29th, but this, this tweet was up high on the most popular list. People were reading this today. 
So she had the most volume she's ever had. She's got new management. As I said, the float isn't tiny in my opinion, but it's not a bad float at all, 55. So there could be something going on with this. There could be some accumulators and then an explosion. So those five stocks, ASCC, WLAN, EAR, WBEV, and GWHP. Put them on your watch list for the next seven days. See what happens. You may catch yourself a... So there you go, a little basket of stocks to consider. And these slow volume days on the OTC market, they do create some strange opportunities. I see stocks running for reasons they normally wouldn't run that hard, but it doesn't matter. And that's what we're learning. On slow days, stocks can run for little reasons with big gains. DD, it'll show you things you never thought were out there and it can put money in your pocket. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.